Now, welcome to the second part of our series on upgrading the RAM on your PC here on the Tiger Direct Facebook fan page. Now, before we explain the basics of upgrading your RAM, making sure that you're choosing the right type of RAM for your system and installing those modules into your motherboard. Now, there are some other options for you that we're going to get into right now that will help you get the most speed possible out of the RAM in your PC. Now, in part one, we directed you to download a utility called Speccy. This gives you detailed information on the components in your PC. So again, make sure you have Speccy installed. If you haven't already done so, go to Google, do a search for Speccy, S-P-E-C-C-Y, download, install, and run this utility as it will give you some very good information on what's going on in your PC. When it first comes up, as we said before, it does give you some very good info on the RAM that's already installed in your computer. Now, this computer right now has four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM installed running at 1066. Now, this motherboard supports DDR3 RAM running in triple channel configuration. Now, that might sound a little confusing, but we'll go ahead and explain it to you right now. If you have just DDR RAM in your PC, you really won't have to worry about much of what we're about to talk about over the next few seconds here. Uh, if you have DDR2 RAM, however, and you have a motherboard that supports a dual channel configuration, this is going to allow you to actually have more memory bandwidth, which means you're actually going to get more speed out of your computer because your computer is going to be able to deal with both RAM modules basically as if they're one, okay? So if you have DDR2 memory running in dual channel on your motherboard, you have to be sure it is installed correctly. Now you're going to see on your motherboard, most motherboards are configured the same way, but yours could be a little bit different and we're going to tell you exactly how to get the information on your specific motherboard in just a second. But typically the RAM modules on your motherboard will be color coded. They could be any possible combination of color but if you want to run in dual channel memory configuration, chances are you're simply going to put your RAM modules in corresponding colors. So if you have two dual channel memory modules, you're going to put those two in one color. And if you have your other two dual channel memory uh, sticks, you're going to put those in the other color. And that's really the basics of making sure that you are installing your RAM correctly to run in a dual channel configuration. Triple channel goes along with DDR3 and is the exact same thing. You just want to be sure that your memory modules are installed into the correct slots to run in that triple channel configuration. And again, typically, you're just going to make sure that those matched pairs or matched threesomes are in the correct memory slots and usually they go along with their corresponding colors. So DDR RAM is going to run in single channel only. DDR2 RAM is going to have the option to run in dual channel and DDR3 RAM is going to have that option to run in triple channel. Now you don't have to run DDR3 RAM in triple channel and you don't have to run DDR2 RAM in dual channel, but you do have that option and it is going to increase the memory bandwidth available in your PC thus increasing the speed of your PC and its memory itself. Now to explain dual channel and triple channel memory a little further, we're actually going to show you how it works in this system right here. This is a DDR3 system that supports triple channel memory. Right now, we have single channel memory cards installed in this system, four of them located right here. What we want to do is actually change this into a triple channel configuration. Now, if you have dual channel or triple channel memory, then it must be run in its pairs or triplets, okay? So if you have dual channel memory, you must have two of those dual channel memory cards installed in your PC in the correct slots or it will not boot. And if you have triple channel memory, you have to have three of those cards installed in your PC in the correct slots, or again, it will not boot. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how this works. We're going to re first remove our single channel DIMMs that are installed in the machine right now, because we want to replace these with triple channel memory DIMMs. So now that we have our memory DIMMs removed, we're going to replace them with those triple channel. Remember, this is DDR3 and this is triple channel. If you're dealing with dual channel, you're only going to be dealing with two memory sticks here. But now we have our three triple channel 
memory sticks located right here. As you can see on the motherboard, we have two pairs of three slots. One colored blue, one colored black. Now, your motherboard may require that your first set of memory sticks be installed in a specific color. Again, this is going to be specific to your motherboard and we will explain to you exactly how to get that memory or that motherboard specific information in just a second. This motherboard, it doesn't matter. So we are going to take our three new memory cards that are triple channel memory and install them in the corresponding memory slots. Now, we're going to go ahead and choose the blue slots here. So we are going to install each of these DIMMs in one of the blue slots on this machine. This goes into the other blue slot. And then our last one goes into the last blue slot. Once these are all installed, you now have your memory running in a triple channel configuration. DDR3 memory running in a triple channel configuration. Now, if you, again, have a dual channel system, you're all going to be working with two memory slots while doing this. So now that we've showed you how to choose the right memory, how to determine whether you're dealing with dual or triple channel memory and how to install it, there is one last thing you may want to do, and that is get the fastest possible memory that your motherboard supports. Now, as we've been following the basics up until now, we've simply been matching the existing memory that's in your PC, which is a very safe route to go because you already know that that speed of memory works with the motherboard that is in your system. However, you may decide you want to upgrade all of the memory in your system and make it as fast as possible. It's actually quite simple. Now remember, if you purchase memory that is faster than the memory that's currently installed in your system, it's going to be bottlenecked, as our producer likes to say, and uh, everything in your system, even your faster memory, is going to run at the speed of the slower memory. So if you want to make sure you have the fastest memory in your system, you're going to want to replace all of the memory in your box if the memory that's currently in there isn't the fastest supported. Now, determining what the fastest supported speed for your motherboard is, it's a little more complicated, but still not very difficult. We did already download that piece of software called Speccy, and that's actually going to give us all the info that we need in order to determine that. Take a look at Speccy, and over on the left-hand side, click on Motherboard, and that is going to give you all the information about the motherboard that's in your PC. It's going to give you the information about the manufacturer, the version, the chipset that is on board. So what you want to do is look for the manufacturer and model of your current motherboard. Plug that into Google and do a little bit of searching. This is where it's kind of up to you to figure this out, but it shouldn't be very difficult with the information that you're able to pull from Speccy itself. Simply go onto Google, do a search, find your motherboard on that Google search, and look for the information on the fastest memory supported for your motherboard. It'll also give you the information about other speeds of memory that are supported for your motherboard. So if you decide that maybe the fastest isn't quite what you want, you just want maybe the second fastest, that information is going to be available to you on Google. Just do a search for your manufacturer and model number that you can find right here on Speccy. Make sure the only memory you buy is the memory that's supported by your motherboard. So again, if you want to make sure you have the fastest memory possible, you're probably going to have to replace all the memory in your system because memory will always run at sort of the lowest common denominator speed. Whatever the slowest memory in your PC is, is the speed that all of the memory in your PC is going to run. So now you can get that information off of Google and make a purchase for the fastest memory possible before you install it in your PC. So there you go. That is the advanced memory upgrade information that you need to determine if you're going to be using single channel, dual channel, or triple channel memory, and how to determine what the fastest possible memory you can put in your PC is. Now, of course, if none of this matters to you and if all of this blew your mind, just stick to our first memory upgrade video and you shouldn't have any trouble whatsoever. So there you go, Facebook fans. All the info you need to upgrade the memory in your PC to make sure you're getting the most bang for the buck upgrading your computer. To download the utility we used, Speccy, to get information on your motherboard and other vital system information, just do an internet search for Speccy, S-P-E-C-C-Y. 
And for more information on picking out the correct memory for your computer, try the Tiger Direct Memory Configurator, which you can get to by visiting bit.ly slash tiger memory. That's bit.ly slash tiger memory. For Computer TV, I'm Bauer.